Welcome to the lesson on Assessment and Authorization ANA, tools. Assessment and authorization tools are provided to assist with data collection and dissemination throughout the Risk Management Framework, RMF, for Department of Defense, DOD, Information Technology, IT, lifecycle. ANA is a complex process that requires collection, management, and dissemination of large amounts of information. Many tools are available and some are required when applying the risk management process, processing Navy security authorization packages, and conducting security tests and evaluations. In this lesson, you will learn about tools used to track the Navy assessment and authorization process, tools to secure various types of systems, and understand the benefits and limitations of each available tool. This training is designed to help you understand how these tools are used to coordinate package processing and test activities. After completing this lesson, you should be able to identify available assessment and authorization tools, including ACAS and EMAS, describe appropriate use and the importance of various tools and features to support the Navy ANA process, identify available automated test tools and manual checklists, Describe the features, benefits, and potential drawbacks of automated test tools. Recognize how the results of automated tools and checklists are captured and used in the Risk Management Framework for Department of Defense Information Technology Lifecycle. Enterprise Mission Assurance Support Service, EMAS, has been available to the larger DOD community since 2007 and has been adopted by the Navy as the required ANA repository, process flow management tool, and ANA automation tool. EMAS is a central repository for security authorization packages and it allows security control inheritance tracking and plan of action milestones, POAM, generation and tracking. EMAS facilitates robust, measurable security controls program management by establishing a standard approach to manage assessment and authorization related data. This ANA tool assists the Navy validator in managing the end-to-end -end process flow by ensuring all required data is housed in a central location and allowing access for all parties involved in the authorization decision. EMAS is sponsored by the Assistant Secretary of Defense for Networks and Information Integration, ASDNII and is managed by the Defense Information Systems Agency, DISA, Program Executive Office for Mission Assurance and NetOps, PEOMA. Accredited for use on both Nippernet and Cipernet and provides public key encryption-enabled software authentication, EMAS automatically updates when DOD cybersecurity policy or required cybersecurity controls are updated. EMAS, along with the Knowledge Service, has since been updated to support RMF and is free to all branches of the military. All functionality in EMAS is derived from the RMF, the RMF Knowledge Service, KS, and process guidance from the RMF Technical Advisory Group, TAG. As a centralized DOD-sponsored application, EMAS provides numerous benefits, such as generating RMF and Federal Information Security Management Act, FISMA, required reports, and offering customizable reporting tools. It provides senior leadership with a dashboard for greater visibility into enterprise cybersecurity posture and enables operational level users access to system-specific compliance information. EMAS enables the implementation of cybersecurity reciprocity among organizations and will automatically update when security control requirements or DOD policy requirements are changed. And incorporating dashboard functionality, EMAS reduces or eliminates duplication of ANA efforts through reciprocity among systems and applications and can be leveraged for Federal Information Security Management Act reporting and reporting to DOD Information Technology Portfolio Repository. Although EMAS is a DOD-wide product, there are several Navy unique requirements you should be aware of as a validator. Let's look at several areas under the System Information System Overview section. First, the system name, found under the System Information tab, is a unique field. No two systems within EMAS can have the same name, and the system name field has a 50 character limit. Second, the DIT per ID field is not the DIT per DAWN number but the DIT per ID can be found on the core tab of a system's DIT per DAWN record, as shown in the image to your right. If your system does not have a DIT per DAWN number, you must enter five zeros. The Ports Architecture section is a new step in the RMF EMAS registration process. Each field is required. A Navy Ports, Protocols, and Services Management, PPSM, registration spreadsheet 
must be submitted to obtain a unique PPSM registry number. Many of the fields allow for uploading supporting documentation. The uploaded documents will be available in the Artifacts tab once the system is registered. As you progress through the registration steps, you will also describe the encryption techniques used by the system and a summary of the location in which the system is installed. The authorization information step of the registration process requires disclosure of the system's current authorization status at the time of registration. This is also the screen used to report the RMF step underway and any relevant terms and conditions the authorizing official, AO, may need to make an authorization decision. When completing the business section of system registration, you must obtain the governing mission area for the DIT per Dawn database. This information can be found within DIT per Dawn on the Core tab under Primary MA Domain, which is the fourth field from the top. Next, if a system has both Commercial Off-the-Shelf COTS and Government Off-the-Shelf GOTS software, the software category should be marked GOTS. Finally, the Other Information section must include several Navy-specific entries the impact date, impact statement, whether the system processes Naval Nuclear Propulsion Information, or NNPI, whether the system includes a wireless capability, whether the system processes North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO, information, the DIT per Dawn ID, and authorization type requested. The last tab of the Security Plan section is the ATC-IATC section. Please note that this section is not currently used by the Navy. To complete the security plan section of the registration, click the Save button to move to the next section. The Navy has developed an RMF categorization form to assist system owners in categorizing their systems. On the RMF categorization form, system owners identify the types of information processed, stored, and transmitted by that system. A complete list of information types and their descriptions can be found in the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, 800-60, Volume 2. After this has been completed for each information type, the additional considerations, the classification and releasability of information, need to know, external connections, etc., are reviewed and assessed to determine the system's overall impact value for each of the three security objectives. This value is documented in EMAS and the RMF categorization form can be uploaded as evidence for the system categorization. The rationale for categorization must be completed and address each of the security objectives. An information type is a specific category of information, e.g. privacy, medical, proprietary, financial, investigative, contractor sensitive, security management. Defined by an organization, or in some instances, by a public law, executive order, directive, policy, or regulation. There are three security objectives, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. FIPS 199 defines three possible security impact values, low, moderate, or high. The impact values of low, moderate, or high are assigned based on the anticipated magnitude of harm that can be expected to result from the consequences of unauthorized disclosure of information, unauthorized modification of information, unauthorized destruction of information, or loss of information or information system availability. The Manage Controls step of system registration allows the user to add additional controls. Click the Add Additional Controls button to open the Add Additional Controls screen. These controls may be selected from those unassigned from the National Institutes of Standards and Technology Special Publication 800-53 Revision 4 Control Set. Any available controls to be added to the baseline will appear. Upon checking a desired control, you will be prompted to provide reasoning for adding to the baseline control set. Enter the reasoning for adding the selected control and click Save. Once saved, the newly added control will be listed alphabetically in Manage Controls. The listing will display an Added icon, signaling it was added to the base of controls, a Delete button to remove the added control, and a Comments hyperlink to view control justification. In the Inheritance section, the user will determine if any controls or individual assessment procedures AP, associated with a control will be made inheritable. By checking the Inheritable column next to the control, the user is making the control available to be inherited by a receiving information system. If a control is marked as Inheritable, 
the receiving information system is eligible to inherit the owning information system's control status and assessment procedure results. Common controls are a form of inheritable controls in RMF. There are three tiers of common controls. Tier 1, Department of Defense, Tier 2, Department of the Navy, and Tier 3, Enclaves and Echelon Level Organizations. Tier 1 common controls are automatically applied in EMAS and are marked with a T1. Common controls must be published by the source organization and denoted as inheritable in EMAS. In the Roles section, individuals are assigned to three types of roles. One, roles for the package approval chain. Two, roles for the control approval chain. And three, roles with view only and audit privileges. Personnel assigned to a role in the package approval chain will have responsibility for moving the system's RMF package through the ANA process. Assign at least one individual to each role. The USN Auditors Group must be selected as a user rep. The next several slides discuss the test tools that may be used to complete Section 2 in EMAS. Most automated tools will require varying levels of manual validation to identify false positives or confirm the status of settings that cannot be checked automatically. Manual testing tools may include configuration guidance, best practices, and security checklists. The DISA security configuration checklists, available on the Information Assurance Support Environment IASE, website, provide checklists for an entire Security Technical Implementation Guidance STIG should the validator choose a 100% manual process. The DISA STIG viewer, shown here, can be used to import automated test results and complete manual validation. When working in EMAS, there are two approval chains, a package approval chain and a control approval chain built in. The control approval chain, CAC, is a sub-workflow of the information system owner, ISO, role and happens before the ISO submits the package for review and approval. The package approval chain, PAC, is the workflow that ends with an accreditation. Looking at the diagram, you will see that the ISO registers the system. Once the ISO completes the system registration, the system automatically becomes visible to the Information System Security Engineer, ISSE. Once the ISSE has completed their input and tasks, they submit the system to the validator. Once the validator has completed validation, they notify the ISO that the system is ready. It is important to note that the validator must be added after the system is registered. If a validator has not been identified in EMAS when the ISSE goes to submit the controls for review, there will not be any controls to select. If the ISO agrees with the results, then the package is submitted to the Echelon 2. A package is a snapshot of the system at that moment in time. Let's take a closer look at how this process works on the following slide. Click the Next button to learn more about the EMAS approval chain. There are a few points to note when working in EMAS. It is important to remember that EMAS has strict process flow management. 
Before you submit a package, make sure you have included any required artifacts. Once the package is submitted, any changes you make or artifacts added will not be included in the package review unless the package is returned to you for resubmission. EMAS underlines misspelled words in red, so there is an opportunity for spell check. You can right-click the word and select the correct spelled word. When entering text into a comments field, EMAS does not recognize the activity until you save. Save frequently or EMAS may time out and you would lose your work. Tools for testing secure system configurations are either automated or manual, and each type has benefits and drawbacks. Automated tools are user-friendly, fast, have documented test date and time, can result in false positives or negatives. However, if used incorrectly, they will capture inaccurate results. Some examples of automated tools include ACAS, Nessus, and SexScan. Manual tools are precise but time-consuming and require a level of technical expertise. Let's take a look at some common automated tools used in the DoD and Navy communities. The Secure Content Automation Protocol, or SCAP, is a framework that enables the development of automated vulnerability standards. Using this framework, SCAP compliant tools can validate security settings agnostic of the tool that is run to collect the data. The SCAP framework reduces ambiguity among different tools to ensure they are testing to the proper standard and provides flexibility in the vulnerability collection process. This flexibility allows any organization to develop their own custom SCAP benchmarks. There are multiple tools that are SCAP compatible, including HBSS, the Assured Compliance Assessment Solution, or ACAS, and the SCAP Compliance Checker, SCC. It was identified that the Navy had a limited capability to quickly and accurately assess the security posture of Navy enterprise networks and non-enterprise networks, i.e., legacy accepted networks. Addressing this gap was deemed a priority in the security of the Department of Defense Information Network, DODEN. Implementation of a short compliance assessment solution, ACAS, was mandated to assist in assessing the defensive posture and identify vulnerabilities that would allow threat actors to compromise the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of the DODEN. ACAS is built to support an enterprise network environment and can provide real-time notifications of security breaches. It allows for an enterprise view of a network and provides a central repository for reports. Click each button to learn more information about a short compliance assessment solution. Then, click the Next button to continue. Let's go over some ACAS ANA reporting requirements. Programs must run reports on individual scans. Do not submit cumulative results. Programs must submit a specific set of formatted ACAS reports. Testing guidance is published by the Navy SCA. Testing guidance may change over time. It is the responsibility of the validator to check the portal frequently for any updates. This must be completed for all assets included in the assessment boundary. When the system is ready for validation, the validator tests each of the controls using the security control validation procedures available on RMF Knowledge Service Portal and may use any of the tools discussed to verify and capture the data, output required reports, and analyze risk. Checklist results may be compiled in the STIG viewer and required information is entered into the Security Authorization Package Processing Tool, EMAS. After analysis is finished, the, the Plan of Action and Milestones, POAM, is prepared, and following final review by the ISO, the package is submitted for an authorization decision and, if granted, moves into the continuous monitoring portion of the RMF lifecycle. Congratulations! You have completed the ANA Tools lesson. You should now be able to 
identify available assessment and authorization tools, including ACAS and EMAS. Describe appropriate use and the importance of various tools and features to support the Navy a and process. Identify available automated test tools and manual checklists. Describe the features, benefits, and potential drawbacks of automated test tools. Recognize how the results of automated tools and checklists are captured and used in the Risk Management Framework for Department of Defense Information Technology Lifecycle.